Want to see some really cool CAD based animation? Yeah, me too. But stay tuned anyway. So today we're trying out a new thing. This is my desktop and here I am down on the bottom right hand side of your screen. Doesn't look too bad now, but due to the technology involved, it's going to get a bit worse. Sorry about that. So if you're not technically minded, you can either switch the noise off and just watch the pretty pictures, um, or you can have 15 minutes of your life back and go make a cup of tea. So my journey started with this video here. Um, I'd seen these before, they look really cool, but I'd never really gotten into them because they seemed quite technical. Uh, this guy does a pretty good job of drawing stuff and explaining how they work, and I have to get me one of these t-shirts. So it turns out they're one of these things, Trammel of Archimedes. That guy had far too much time in his hands. Um, but basically it's two circles, one rolling around the inside and straight lines and stuff. Anyway, lots of maths if you're that way inclined. Um, so first thing to do is obviously see if anyone else has made them, and lots of people have. Uh, there are some complicated ones, some basic ones, but for me it's all around the extra, extra hardware that you need for these things, or pins that might break, or press fits that won't last, or binding bits. <clears throat> so I need to go and over-engineer one of my own. And here it is. Looks pretty cool. So there's a couple of features that you need to pay attention to. So this lane here that this puck travels in, um, the puck has to be long enough so that it reaches across there so that it can move into the next one, be supported and not crash into the sidewall. Uh, but it also needs to be short enough so that it doesn't crash into this other puck um, traveling the other way as things obviously rotate around itself. Uh, so the width of this channel is dependent on the significantly over-engineered bolt I use uh, and the distance across here is dependent on that radius and making sure and stuff. Anyway, so I got pretty close with the first one. So I couldn't quite work out at the time how to make this corner and, and see whether this whether it was going to crash into each other. So I thought, well, I could just do um, some maths and work it out and step through, or we could do some animation. So that's where my segue comes for today. So here we have a cube, particularly boring cube. It's just sitting there doing not a lot. So first thing we have to do is go up to the menu and switch on the animate. And this pops up this little time thing uh, just underneath the picture. So time is what the computer controls for you. Uh, it goes between zero and one. And FPS is frames per second. So let's put something in there just to uh, just to make it work a little bit. And the steps are the number of slices between zero and one. So I'm going to do a little bit of a circly thing, so we're going to go 360. And here, the fast progression of time. Um, get to 0.999 and then back to zero. The other thing to note here is the console is going a bit bananas. Oh, and we'll come back to dump pictures in a minute. But the console is going a bit bananas. What it's doing is it's effectively rendering your code 360 times for each time slice. But nothing's moving. So what you need to do is access a variable. So let's hide that one and then put switch this one on. There's a dollar $t variable. So since I'm doing 360 steps, I want this to rotate once. So it's your t variable times 360 degrees. And there we go. It's now rotating. Ta-da! Another interesting point here is the uh, save backup file. It's not saving your file, so that change I just made hasn't been saved. That can cause you problems later if you're doing the auto preview. It can climb up its own bottom, and that's not pleasant. So using that T variable there, it's okay, but a bit boring. There we go, lots of other stuff going on. Oh, and because this is rendering every single slice, if you start typing things wrong, you will see it breaks. That's fine. So there it's rotating in the Z as it did previously, but also in the Y as well. That's great. And there it is rotating in all three axes. Nice little bit of tumbling going on there. But rotate isn't the only thing you can do with this. You can also do some translation as well of the object. So those eagle-eyed amongst you will see function for a circle in there. Radius times cos gives you your X. Uh, that's great, it's moving left and right. That's important for later. And if we move to here, you'll also see the Y component plugged in. Now this, this cube is now rotating and tumbling and translating 
all over the place. That's still not the end of the story though. If you look down at the bottom of the OpenSCAD screen, you've got these viewport variables. Um, now, you can also control those as well. So while you can control your object in its time slicing, you can control those. And that's done with these variables up here. $VPT is the translate, you can see those values match. VPR is the rotate, and VPD is the distance. So what you can do is you can use $T in there too. So there we have some zooming going on. Zoom. Lovely. And we can also have some translation y, rotation y stuff going on. So you can see that using the dollar t variable in anything, you can transition. Uh, anything using a function of between 0 and 1 for your entire animation, and then it resets. So I you know, ideally want to do loops. Anyway, so how does that help us? Well, let's put these back to where they were. Let's move away from the cube, and then back to our little tremor. So you can see that it's now struggling a bit more. That's because of recording technology, as I previously mentioned, uh, but also it's quite a busy old scene going on there. You can't really see much because the arm gets in the way a lot. So let's remove those. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Oh, now here we go. Did it hit a bit? Okay, not sure. So what we can do is we can hide that and we can switch that on. Now let's watch. There it is, there it is. That looked pretty close, didn't it? Okay, so what we can do is we can stop the control. But because otherwise, every time you move the viewport, it's just going to reset. So we switch that off. And now it will quite merrily do its thing. That's cool. So in order to make this work, it's, you, you're not going to see it. So what you do, you switch off your frames. So now it's stationary. And now you can control time directly. If only life was this simple. So there we go. So we can see if we step through it seems to miss pretty much everything. So there we have it. Let's print that bad boy out and see what happens. So going back to, um, let's switch this, let's switch this bit back on and switch my frames back on. So now what does this dump pictures do? Well, let's click it. So you notice it's slowed down. Um, what it's doing now is for each one of those frames, it's taking a screenshot of the, the viewport um, and it's saving it to a file. So let's let it do that for a second. Okay, so it's now switched this option off for you and what it's done is it's created that many files uh, in the directory where all your files are kept. So here you can see that frame, there's that frame, there's another frame, etc. So now what you can do with each of these images is upload them to an online GIF creator or, as I like to, use a product called FFmpeg. So I've created a little script um, which just replicates those files a number of times, in this case three. Uh, so there's effectively three loops. It then uses FFmpeg to create a, an MP4 and then it cleans up after itself. So let's watch this whiz through its thing. Right, so now it's cleaning up after itself. What has it done? Well, it's created a video which we can watch here. So what you'll note is that it does three loops, but it does it a lot faster. And the reason for this is because I told it to render 120 frames a second, so it looks a lot smoother. Um, so what I'll do is I'll make sure this is done properly and I'll upload that. Um, but what about the 3D print? Well, as you can see, it's doing quite well. It seems to hang together reasonably well. There's a lot, not very much friction. All good. So thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed what you've seen, please give it a good thumbs up. If you haven't, give it a thumbs down and let me know what I can do better in the comments below. But either way, don't forget to subscribe and click the bell as well so you'll know when I do new stuff. Thanks for watching.